Thank you. Justice Sotomayor? There is a difference between stabilizing a person who presents a serious medical condition requiring stabilization than a person who presents with a condition, quoting Idaho's words, where there is a um, poses a great risk of death to the pregnant women. You agree there's daylight between the two? We agree, and I think this is and most And so there will be some women who present serious medical condition that um, the federal law would require to be treated who will not be treated under Idaho law. No, I disagree with that. Idaho hospitals are treating these women. They're not treating these women with abortions Sorry. necessarily, Your Honor. And, and that's, that's an my important point. point. Just answer the point, which is they will present with a serious medical condition that doctors in good faith can't say will present death, but will present potential loss of life. Those doctors, a potential loss of an organ or serious medical complications for the woman, they can't perform those abortions. Yeah, Your Honor, if that hypothetical exists, and I don't know of a, um, a condition that is so certain to result in the loss of an organ, but also cer so certain not to um, transpire with death, if that condition exists, yes, Idaho law does say that abortions in that case aren't allowed. And I think. All right, that, that, let me stop you there because. All of your legal theories rely on us holding that federal law doesn't require, cannot preempt state law on these issues. And so when I asked you the question, if a state defines likelihood of death more stringently than Idaho does, you would say there's no federal law that would prohibit them from doing that. Well, I would say that EMTALA does not contain a standard of care. So there is no, no standard of care. Um, in your briefing, you made the SG's position here, and you almost argue that now, that, um, that their uh, position that federal law requires stabilizing treatment and not equal treatment of patients, which was a position you took in your brief. You seem to have backed off from it here. You seem to agree that federal law requires some stabilizing condition, whether or not you provide it to other patients. But I have a countless briefs that say that both that HHS has filed um, that pre dots pre 2009. This is not an unprecedented position. That HHS, um, in countless situations cited hospitals for discharging patients who required an abortion as a stabilizing treatment. Congress discussed that topic in the Affordable Care Act and explicitly said that nothing in the Affordable Care Act shall be construed to relieve any health care provider from providing emergency services as required by state or federal law. Medical providers have told us that for decades they have understood both federal law and state law to require abortions as stabilizing conditions for people presenting serious medical risk. Lower courts, there's at least cases of lower courts saying you have to provide abortion. So this is not a post-Dobbs unprecedented position by the government. It absolutely is. The, in footnote two, the administration cites to two spreadsheets that contain 115,000 rows of enforcement instances. The administration has counsel, not identified a single instance. Counsel, pre-Dobbs, this wasn't much of a question, but there is HHS guidance and there's at least three cases in which it was invoked. The fact that we didn't have to, that HHS didn't have to do it much be pre, before pre Dobbs doesn't make their position my point unprecedented. Is more, my point is more fundamental, Your Honor. It's not just that there are few instances, there are no instances, and not just on the issue of abortion, on any instance where HHS has come in and told a hospital, you have to provide a treatment that is contrary to state law. And this isn't just about abortion. Consider oh, opioids. Oh, now we're back to that. Okay. Thank you.